In this video, we have a similar 99 Ford 3.3 engine with 150,000 miles. Now the complaint is the same. The check engine light suddenly came on and at the same time a steady and consistent misfire at idle and while driving. Only this time the scanner shows code P0305. So what's the difference? Access. Cylinder number 4 had easy access. Both the injector and the spark plug were right up front. Now cylinder number 5 has limited access. Both the injector and the plug are underneath the intake. With the intake off you can see them. There they are. But how do you get to them? You don't. Not without some dismantle time of course. But you can get to the wires. They're just laying right on top. Now remember it's basically the same situation. For this to have happened, we had to lose one of the four fundamental components, timing, spark, fuel, or compression. All we need now is evidence. But because of the limited access, we can't use this method. So in addition to your critical thinking, we have to be a little creative too. And just like before, if it were a timing problem, it would have affected more than one cylinder, so we can rule out timing. And that leaves us with the other three, spark, fuel, and compression. All we need is evidence. How are we going to get the access to the spark and fuel if it's under the intake? Because of the limited access, we can't see the actual spark, but we can see its electrical signature by reading the secondary ignition. Notice how easy it is to get to the ignition wires. They're right there, laying right on top. Okay. okay, we're looking for the ignition. We're going to test the spark to see where they got it. We're coming here. We're hooking up to a known good spark plug, not the one under suspicion. If you look at the lab scope, you can see a good single ignition pattern. I'll we'll switch back over here. I'm going to switch to a second good one. Go back to the lab scope. You can see through the good pattern. Now we'll go back to the suspicious one, which is number five. And we'll hook on to number five. Go back to the scope and you can see the bad pattern. We've got negative burn time. The spark is firing. Negative burn time. Something's wrong with that injector. Now you'll notice that I said something's wrong with that injector. But I was looking for spark. So you may be asking yourself, how is that evidence of good spark? Interpreting secondary ignition is really a whole class in itself. So expand your training by taking a class in it. But for now, let me explain what this confirms. Here's the signature of the secondary ignition. Notice the spark line and the burn time. Now the spark line, because it's so high, confirms that we have very good spark. And you can see that's the spark plug. Now if you look at the burn time, this confirms a very good actual combustion. This is actual burning. If you have fuel sprayed in a compressed cylinder and ignite it with a spark, you will have combustion. Notice, I said in a compressed cylinder, if there was spark and fuel but no compression, there would not be good combustion. So cylinder number 5 has spark. Our signature confirms it. If there was no fuel, there would be no burn time. So the negative burn time confirms there is no fuel. Now keep in mind, we have a code for only one cylinder. All the other cylinders are getting fuel, but number five is not. So in one test, we are confirming compression, confirming spark, and confirming the absence of burn time. Okay, we have no burn time. Is it because we have no fuel sprayed? What if the injector isn't being commanded on? How would you confirm that the injector is being commanded on? Now remember, 1, 2, and 3 were easy to get to on this engine. But 4, 5, and 6, they're buried up underneath the intake. Now I don't like to take the intake off if I don't have to. And what if I'm wrong so at this point? So I want to test that injector, but I don't want to take the intake off. So how can we test it? There's the 
injector right there that's a picture of it with the intake actually off why not come over here this is where the injector harness hooks up okay i'm going to try and test for an injector i'm going to first test a good injector so you can see that and then go to the bad injector wire we're going to the best connection right here come down in here locate my wire pierce the wire now if you look at the lab scope you can see the good injector pattern Take that out of there, come back to the harness. I'm going to go to my suspect injector. I'll pierce that wire. Go to the lab scope and there's no signal. We got a dead injector. We've got an open circuit in that injector. So we have evidence from our tests at the injector bulkhead connector. So now we need to take the intake off and actually get down to the injector. Injector out, put it on the bench, hook it up and do an ohm test and that will just confirm it so when you do put that new injector in you've got a lot of confidence that you've fixed the problem. So once again, understanding how the system works, using our critical thinking, we found a way to test it even though the access wasn't easy.